welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 336. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Starstream. Hello, everyone. Hey there, man. How are you doing? It's been a nice week, I guess. Uh, other than the audio dirt, so while we are trying to record this. There's episode. no audio dirt. <laughs> while learning. <laughs> It's sinking. Oh my goodness! Like it's it's uh, well, the derbs is all from the sinking. I mean, I'm still terrible at this. <laughs> okay, sinking is okay. You, you know movies when they use the clapboard. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, you notice they use a clapping sound like katak. Yeah. You know why? Well, it's the sync of the video and the audio. Yes, and essentially what we're doing is the same. But you know me, I can be very derp. Uh, <laughs> in all honesty, you have a really expensive mic. And when people hear you talk, it doesn't sound good. But when I hear you talk, it sounds great. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, uh, you you buy these expensive gears and whatnot. And then in the end, outcome sounds like crap. <laughs> so it's like, mm, yeah, never mind, never mind. Oh, boys. <laughs> Well, because originally it was sounding terrible, so I decided, you know what, I just gonna spend all in and just get the good, good setup. And, uh, <laughs> next thing you know, I got a complaint from Norman saying that, oh, you know, just because I have expensive stuff and I'm not utilizing it properly. Hmm. Is, okay, good one. that and also Discord? Ah, yes, Discord. For some reason, I mean, we finally shift to Singapore server. Well, yay! But the only problem is somehow for my side, um, Apparently, Norman, he can listen to my recording, is fine. But from my side, it's a thousand ping. I which for some reason is very, very weird. Yeah, I, I don't get it. Like, that is just strange. Like, why? Well, all in all honesty, let's go to the pony news. And... Uh, well, not really pony news, because in terms of pony news, we don't have squat. Like, nothing in terms of pony news. Like, nothing is happening around the pony news, except for books and whatnot. Well, merchandise is one thing, and transition to that thing, Toy R Us is coming back! Well, f- for the US, that is. Well, Woo! Yeah, yeah, I mean, Toys R Us, uh, earlier this year, Toys R Us uh, declared bankruptcy, uh, Chapter 4 bankruptcy, which means uh, total bankrupt liquidation of L assets and whatnot. And yeah, people thought that, okay, uh, Toys R Us is officially dead. Cry, cry. Uh, fortunately for us, Toys R Us Southeast Asia is controlled by a different uh, manager or different group. And it's independent of if, the American version. American European, yes. If I'm not mistaken, it's controlled by the Hong Kong branch. If, yeah. I'm, not, if I'm not wrong. I, I think that's the case. But still, uh, it's one of those scenarios where uh, Southeast Asia still had their Toys R Us, yay us. So anywho, a few months later, uh, Wall Street Journal reported that Toys R Us is kind of making a comeback. And depending on the scenario here, uh, it seems that they're going to try something new. That leads us to the second news where uh, they're rebranding and calling themselves uh, Geofreeze toy box. I think Geofreeze the mascot. Yep, it's the mascot, the giraffe mascot. So now what they're doing here is a wholesale toy distributor and uh, intellectual property company. So it's something like that now. So instead of, well, having multiple stores, they're more of a wholesaler where they supply stuff. It sounds like that. Hmm. It's kind of interesting. But you know what would be more interesting? What? If, for example, they themselves got controlled by the Hong Kong branch, that would get it more interesting. <laughs> nah, man. Like, it won't... I, I mean, the Asia branch or something. But then again, this is US, what we are talking about. And we already mentioned that it's independent. Yeah, and it makes no sense for Toys R Us Asia to um, kind of buy out American, especially with the debt they have and the bills they need to pay. Uh, yeah, so buying out a bank, almost bankrupt, no profit kind of scenario is not smart. Yep, it just kind of remind me of a <clears throat> bit of incident back when uh, one of the insurance company just got some issues in US and they actually had to pull out. But and then the Hong Kong branch was literally just 
pull out from them. Ah, uh, yes. Pull out from the US branch. Yeah, remember that. But that happens like many years ago. Yeah, yeah, that was many years ago. And now we are still here. Is still surviving, funnily, and still under the same name, AIA. But which is funny because it's American. It's supposedly American, but it's now it's Asian. <laughs> but still, um, this is good news. Like, uh, Toys R Us, quote unquote, is coming back with a rebranding, and who knows? Like, this is going to be fun because Toys R Us is living as G GTB now. GTB, what do you mean by that? Uh, Geofreeze Toy Box because Geofreeze oh. is a really hard name to pronounce. So GTB, so it's much easier. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can you can say TRU, it's Toys R Us. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's one thing. Yeah, but still. But I just wonder since now they switch to the the middleman now, it, will it be still as expensive? I don't know. Like right now, they're seeing a lot of things where. It's uncertain. They, they say they're a wholesale toy distributor. So, okay, interesting. Like, what does that mean in the bigger picture? Are they just a supplier or the middleman to a supplier? Because if you want toys from Hasbro or Mattel and whatnot, I think you would have a direct line to them, right? Well, in this case, it says when it says wholesale, I think it's really literally the middleman. Yeah. It's probably the end. It's for those... They act as the middleman. They help for those like smaller retailers, like doing the kind of a uh, restocking or things like that. Yeah, I they, mean probably they put oh because it's resale by uh, Toys R Us. At least those smaller ones will get more rep- reputation. Probably, yeah. I mean, because considering that uh, considering that TRU is already as an established brand name, and now GTB is uh, it's coming back. Maybe from there they could pay off the debt, and then they themselves could open back. Toys R Us again. You never know, right? Nah, they, they're not gonna take Toys R Us back again. Uh, the naming convention there has come well, and gone. Well, it's the naming thing. Yeah, I mean, we they're... never know. This is this is a long, this is a long different kind of story. We we never know what they're planning to do anyway. It's one of those situations where you have a really good brand name, but in this scenario here, I think they want to get far away as possible from TRU and just go for Geofreeze Toy Box because it's a rebranding, mm-hmm. they're coming back and they're start fresh. So uh, all the stigma about that and whatnot has come and gone. What they don't have is the branding for TRU. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, this will be interesting. I mean, if they, they could be one of those toy distributor places like... Uh, in, in Japan, I think you have Amiyami, and what else? I, I, I'm trying to remember because I did save something. Well, uh, there's Kotobukiya. Kotobukiya doesn't do that. They're just a company that, uh, what you call this? They're, they're a company that just supply toys or figures directly to uh, big stores. Wait, what about Hobby Link Japan? Well, that is a distributor. Uh, also, Entertainment Earth. Okay. That's another one. Oh, yeah. There's Takara Tomi. Does that count? No, Takara Tomi's branding. Hmm. Like, if I you don't want... I know much about my... The, the easy way to differentiate everything is, okay, you take a look-see at uh, toys. Uh, what... Is their brand or well, well, branding is one thing, and it's I think it's what the copyright, whatever it is. You take a look, see, like for Transformers, it's under Hasbro, most of Marvel stuff is mm-hmm. under Hasbro, also. Then Hot Wheels, Mattel, and so on. Then uh, you take a look, see at Japan, you have Takara Tomi who do the model figure cars. Bandai, who does the Gumplas and whatnot, and so on. But anyway, Geoffrey's Toy Box could be another entertainment earth where they just supply stuff. So, that will be cool. Another online place to get toys. So, yeah. But anywho, um, that's the news for this week. Besides the uh, tie-in books and whatnot, there's nothing really much to be said. Well, one thing I did see though uh, on Facebook... Apparently, Kotobukiya says that the Pinkie Pie 
the figurine. Remember when we talked about it back then? Uh-huh, yeah. We showed your figures. And it's apparently gonna be starting pre-order soon. Oh, cool. But pre-order from which store? That's the big question. Like, which store do, does take it? I'm assuming Ami Ami does probably. I'm not too sure, but from my understanding, I think Kotobukiya, they do online store also? Nah. Like, I, maybe maybe sure. Kotobukiya Japan, but I'm not 100% sure if Kotobukiya International does it. I saw their post on the Facebook. Yeah. That's the thing. Uh, I'm looking at the international Koto JP. Yeah, nah, man. Like I, I don't. I, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see a place to shop or buy it now. Well, I guess we can wait for Ami Ami then. True, depending on which store and whatnot. So yeah, yeah. I'm looking here and yep. yeah, they they're posting like oh yeah, uh, we we have the what uh. Uh, Kotobukiya 19 hours ago posted a tweet take a look at our painted version of our lovely Pinkie Pie Bishojo statue pre-order starting soon yeah pre-order starting soon from where and what so yeah confusing but anyway. well at least since they announced it that means better than nothing right true, means true. we're gonna have a pre-order soon and uh, and uh, I can't I think I am thinking maybe eventually I'm gonna get a Fluttershy one you oh. never know. <laughs> alright, alright. But anywho, that's the news for this week. Oh, well, let's, let's see. Let's go to the next topic. Uh, my favorite topic. What have you been doing with our week? So, Star, what have you been doing, man? My week has been quite slow. Other than I'm busy working here and there. Uh, handling all this uh, documentation and doing some warehouse stuff. Other than that. Uh, gaming wise, not much change, but I just been looking around for my uh studying the tech setup because I'm planning to do a next step in terms of my PC upgrade, getting the monitor set up, and then finish up my audio. Then once all that is done, then I can just shove it everything to one side and just say, "Oh, I got everything that I needed, and I don't need to upgrade for some time." That kind of deal. All right. Just getting focusing on uh, saving up my cash and uh, travel, I guess. All right. Sounds fun. Uh, I don't know, man. Like PC stuff right now for me, I'm happy with what I got already. My hardware is not the greatest or, or latest or greatest, but still, it's pretty okay. I got a 1060, four gig of yeah uh, GDDR5 RAM. Yeah, GDDR5. Well, it's better than than nothing. Yeah, to be honest, for my case, it'll be a bit overkill considering I want to get ultra wide, the three ultra wide monitor. And maybe like if I'm crazy enough, I'll put the fourth monitor on top or something like that. <laughs> I've seen that before. Well, good luck, man. I I hope you get that whole crazy setup. Yeah, you you do yeah. the, you, you do the whole crazy setup and you just play Minecraft. Great. Yes, can't wait to play Minecraft using that. <laughs> uh, why don't you just play solitaire then? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Minesweeper, maybe? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Three more little ultra wide, 34 inch Minesweeper. Woo! <laughs> Minesweeper on full screen. Yay! Yeah, no, yeah. no. Probably, I'll probably maybe do some streaming or play some rhythm games from here and there because considering that I'm gonna put one of the ultra wide to, well, a 2560 by 1440p as a vertical screen instead <coughs> rather than have all three. Just a horizontal screen. Ah, uh, alright. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm just looking at a lot of monitors and there's too just too many what do you call it? S- setups, I guess. So uh, too many brands and I kinda want one with uh, low response time and input lag if possible, then everything will be easy. Yeah, the input lag is important. But anywho, uh, yep. on to me. Well, well, For me more magic. That's about it. I I played Magic the Gathering a bit more now. Um, Overwatch two, nothing new with Overwatch now. Halloween coming soon. I think by next week we're already getting it. So yay, there's that. So yay, get excited for it. Yay. So anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themissionjmail dot com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. 
So, Star, where can the good people find you? People could find me on my DeviantArt, Angelico Access, or my Twitter, is, which is the same thing also. Alrighty then. I will be back to you. Alright. And also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. The City Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyFlife.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, do subscribe to our review and discussion podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song Review, The Pony Episodes, Comics, and Movies. Sometimes we like to review other things like America's Ladybugs, uh, some movies, uh, games, and comic books. So yeah, we are well-rounded over there. Do subscribe if you're interested. I highly recommend subscribing. And if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Master of Lag, Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Lurker Cat, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support. And Star, as a supporter, have you been enjoying the content that has been, well, produced on the Patreon the exclusive, the early release and whatnot. Well, I've been uh, enjoying it. <laughs> That's all I could say. <laughs> oh, boys. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, sometimes uh, uh, people at Patreon, they get access to uh, Patreon exclusive edits. So, yeah, it'll be fun. Like, sometimes it'll be some minor derp or some cutout line that's not safe for um, YouTube, but totally good on Patreon because, yay, exclusive, right? Does that mean that Sweetie Bot will not work on the Patreon edits? <laughs> oh, she will. It's just something that's not really kind of important in terms of the whole uh, recording. For example, what you call this? Um, Suddenly, I'm talking, Random I'm talking. babbling. Yeah, just, just me talking and then suddenly... Um, Silver Quill has to pick up a phone or something. Okay, then like, all right. No, that's a bad example. <laughs> no, it's just like something <laughs> happened. Like, oh, uh, this thing happened. Oh, okay, we react to it. And then if it doesn't really contribute to the show, I'll normally cut it out. But I'll review it in the Patreon edit. And sometimes if I find it really entertaining, funny and whatnot, I'll keep it in and mostly people on the Patreon will get access to the kind of uh, in jokes yeah uh, be sure to catch what uh, I, I <clears throat> like we recently did a recording and I think I finished editing it and yeah uh, Legends of Magic Issue 4 that's something we've been working on uh, that has been finished edit. And uh, there's two versions, the Patreon edit and also the normal edit. And uh, usually it doesn't really count that much in terms of how long the episode is. But uh, yeah, it's <laughs> a few seconds. Like I think uh, the Patreon edit is 37 minutes while the normal version is 36 minutes. So yeah, I think one minute of content gone. So yay. Still, it's something for these Patreons. Yay. Don't tell me that one minute is including all those coughing. Oh no! <laughs> no, people at home will not hear the coughs. Like, I will remove the coughs. Oh boys. Okay. But anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. And this is Last Dream. And we'll catch, catch you next week with another MBS show. See ya. See ya. See ya.